Welcome to my channel. Happy Friday. My name is Orly Shani and this is the DIY designer. Today is all things bleach. I have six bleach DIYs to share for you and I'm not talking about six projects. I'm talking about six techniques. Six different techniques you can do with bleach to instantly transform your clothes. We're going to be stamping with bleach, stenciling with bleach, writing with bleach, ombre bleach, reverse tie-dye bleach, and two different ways. I mean, so many, so many fun projects that you guys can do to your home decor or to your clothing. It's really versatile, really easy, and great for beginners. Now, I gotta thank today's sponsor for pulling through and making this video happen. Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, so thank you so much. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, you're gonna love it, because if you're here, you're here to learn something, and that's really exactly what Skillshare is all about. Now, it's an online learning community, but they're constantly evolving. So they just started doing a few new things that I love. Number one, they have this new series called Talents Unknown. It's like really big name celebrities that come on with a creative expert who teaches them. So while they're learning, we get to kind of learn with them. It's really entertaining and really funny. They also started these five minute courses. So many of us are short on time, but we still want to learn a little something new. And now when you become a member of Skillshare, you'll start getting recommended courses. So for me, that's a lot of like content creation, creative inspiration, writing, editing. And there is a brand new one, which is called Final Cut from Beginner to YouTuber. And he's not kidding. The amount of classes within this one course, it really covers everything. He starts the course literally with like a blank slate, shows how to import footage, how to create in and out points so that you can create your timeline. And he takes you all the way through until you get to the place where there are multiple levels, music and voiceover and video and graphics and B-roll. It really is so amazing. And I've been editing on Final Cut forever. And I gotta say, there were so many new things I learned. A lot of like shortcuts, like keyboard shortcuts I didn't even know existed. So anyway, I highly, highly recommend it. Click the link down below. I do have a link and it's gonna give you guys a free trial of premium. And if you miss it, because only the first thousand of you to click the link will get it, it's still under $10 a month for all of premium. So it's absolutely worth it. It's such a great thing. I just love knowing I have it. So if I have a random thing that I want to learn how to do, I just pop in, I search it. There's tons of courses and I can kind of go to town. All right, you guys, let's get into this DIY. It's fabulous and you're going to love it. Let's do it. Alrighty, first thing you're gonna do is grab your t-shirt. I'm starting with a black 100% cotton t-shirt. The higher the cotton value, the more the color is gonna come out. So the more of a white color you're gonna get from the bleach. So I started off first time around grabbing a stencil that I bought on Amazon and not using any tacky spray, no, no adhesive, just basically painting in. I didn't love the way it was looking. I didn't love the stencil itself and I didn't love how it was blending out. So I decided to make my own custom stencil with my Cricut. I'll show you guys how to do this in another video, but basically I just created my own stencil that was not only larger leopard spots, but actually a larger stencil altogether. I also used the bleach gel and mixed a little bit of cornstarch in. It created more of a paste, which allowed me to create really clean lines. I also did a little spray adhesive on the back of the stencil, which is why you can see it looks kind of cloudy. So you just spray a little of the adhesive, lay it down, then you paint in with that gel bleach and uh, cornstarch mixture. You can see that I avoided all the pieces on the end because it was the edge of the stencil and I didn't want to see that. I would leave the stencil on it for a few minutes and let the color develop. That way you can go back in and kind of fill in any gaps if you missed anything. A little bit is cool, but you do want to touch up if needed. Now you can peel and you can see how perfectly the stencil applies. It's really crisp, really great, and you can see over time the color will develop even more into this really nice like tan color. I marked my stencil so I knew which was the top. Depending on the stencil you have, that may or may not be relevant, but I do think it's helpful. Now, as you go, this is a step and repeat process. This is what the gel bleach looks like when you mix in the cornstarch. It gets kind of cloudy and a little like pasty. If you're doing an all over print like me, like this leopard print, you just basically keep working in sections. You just pick up the stencil, rinse it off in between each time so that the bleach and the tacky spray sort of rinses, add more spray, lay it down, and just keep working. Do the sleeves, do the side seams, do the back. Keep going until your entire thing is covered and now our leopard top is done. And I wanna show you one other version of a stencil just to like remind you that there are 1 million options you can do. I happen to do another overall stencil with like different size stars, but you guys could do a logo, you could do a picture, you could do your name. I mean, literally stripes, like anything that you wanna do. As long as the piece you're working on, whether it's home decor or clothing, is a natural fiber that's gonna react with bleach, literally the options are endless. So really think about the stencils and the designs and all the things that you can create. It's so freaking fun. Okay, let's 
let's move on to this. The only name I could think of was bleach blocking. I don't really know what to call it. I actually saw this on TikTok and I was like, there's no way it's this easy. It is, it's so fun. So literally I just took a black t-shirt and a big plastic chain and I'm spraying with a, a mixture of regular bleach and water spraying all over the shirt. Now pull the chain off and you end up with a graphic that was like a blocker. It created the chain detail on the shirt and you'll see what it looks like at the very end of the video. Now bleach ombre is another one I really wanted to do. Off White did a full collection of these. They're really expensive, but they're really easy to do. All that you need is a continuous mist spray bottle. I will link this one down below. And the reason this is important is that it sort of airbrushes it on. This is mixed with a little bit of water so that it goes on really light. And what you're gonna do is exactly like what it sounds like. You're gonna start saturated on the bottom and then feather up as you go. You, what you're gonna wanna do is like work on this throughout the day. That way as the color develops, you can continue to kind of tweak and manipulate it. Do you see that little line, that dark crease that I got? What I forgot to do when I first started and I end up doing it is this. You really want to take some big plastic bags and put them inside the legs or the arms. That way it creates a full three dimensional rounded shape. That way you end up with no creases. Once you stuff the legs and once you stuff the arms, the process is the same. Super, super saturated on the bottom or whichever part you want to be white and then feather out as you go. You can see they started really getting there, but what the best thing I can recommend is just leave them hanging. Leave them for an hour, come back, see where you're at, go back in, add a little bit more where you wanna feather it out, leave, come back, it'll develop over time and you'll end up with a really nice soft ombre. It's one of my favorite. Now we're gonna do reverse tie-dye in a few different ways. I wanna make this, I don't even know what that's called, like what that pattern is called, but I found this jacket at the thrift store and it was perfect to make that vibe. So I'm sort of like accordioning it. I don't know if that's a word, but I basically just like pleat it up and put some rubber bands on it. What I'm trying to do is create those horizontal shapes. So it's all nice and tied and I'm just using a squeezy bottle with regular bleach. I only happen to have the splashless, splashless bleach, so that's what I'm using, but use whichever bleach you have here. You wanna cover the entire thing. You, it's gonna look white, but you have to remember all of the blue is inside. So even though it looks white from the outside, look, there's actually not that much white. So what I ended up doing, which I haven't done yet, is I just take my squeeze bottle and I connect these lines. So I laid it flat on the floor and I just sort of added in bleach to connect the lines and make sure that I got the design I wanted. Now this is the next reverse tie-dye. I did this in my reverse tie-dye video. So if you've already seen this, you can fast forward. For those of you that didn't, what you're gonna do is take a damp t-shirt. You're gonna put the graphic front side down because when you spiral, the side that's facing down is always a cleaner spiral. I don't know why that is. It's like something about the pressure against the surface creates a really flat spiral. So upside down, damp, spiral, and rubber band. Then you're gonna do just a little bit of bleach and you're basically gonna dab it into the bleach and flip it so that some of that bleach will go back into the shirt. Do the other side, same thing. Dab it into the bleach and then let it rest. If you notice any area is black that you're seeing physically from the outside, just take your gloves and add in some bleach because you want what's on the outside to be basically as white as possible. My original thought was rinsing out the bleach and then just dyeing it while it was still spiraled. Looked super cool until I washed it and what leftover bleach was still on the shirt washed away all the dye. So instead what I recommend is bleach it, wash it, re-spiral, then dye. You're gonna add a ton of dye so it gets super, super saturated and this is where I was at. I loved the way it looked, however, I was missing my yellow. My yellow didn't really take. So what I decided to do was while the shirt was still damp, I took a powder dye and I buffed in the yellow. What that did is when it mixed with the pink, it gave me orange. When it mixed with the blue, it gave me green. And in the middle, it gave me yellow. So it brought out that full vibrant color of the rainbow, that center color that I was missing. And I was able to be really specific and buff it in, like basically paint it in to be the most perfect tie-dye ever. And it's still one of my favorites. Alrighty, to do this version, which is basically like an all over black sweatshirt with a very minimal spiral taken out of it, you wanna start with a dry sweatshirt. Make it dry, spiral it, rubber band it just like before. Now, I only have a little bit of bleach here and I am dunking one side into that little bit of bleach and letting the excess bleach run out of the sweatshirt. Do not flip it upside down so that the bleach goes back in. You wanna let the excess run off of it so that only that outermost layer is getting bleach. You can use your gloves with a little bleach to kind of paint in anywhere that you see gaps. Put it in the sun and let it bake, which is gonna bring out even more of that really, really light color. You want a really light color, as close to white as you can get. Same thing with the other side. Let the bleach run off of it. Do not flip it. And look, boom, you end up with this like 
perfect. It looks like I painted it. It looks like white painted. It's super, super crisp. At this point now, you're gonna fill in all of that with dye, whatever color you want, whatever pattern you want. You just squeeze it in, let it sit for about, I don't know, 24 hours and then dry it. Now this was like a last minute idea because I got some bleach on this sweatshirt by accident. So I did it dry, a super light spiral, and I sprayed it with a mist. This is the watered down bleach and it creates like a light airbrushed look. So basically it's still the spiral shape, it's still the reverse tie dye effect, but instead of it being thick and liquid and tight, it's sort of this airbrushed feathery effect, which is really fun. All right, let's move on to one of my favorite, which is bleach stamping. I had this idea because I thought it's basically like the reverse of a stencil. Why wouldn't stamps work? So first thing I did was grab a piece of scrap fabric and try stamping it, like put the stamp into the bleach and stamp, but it got too much bleach everywhere. So it lost a lot of the detail because the bleach got into some of those crevices. So instead I did a really, really light coat with a paintbrush and that's what's on top there. You can see much more of the detail remains. Like look at that unicorn. That detail is really great because it's just a really, really light feathery amount of bleach. And I'm using the gel bleach here. Now, I decided to do this on a pillowcase. This was like a linen pillowcase that I had. And what I recommend doing is once you decide which stamp you're gonna do, just practice, do like 20 practices. Because what I can say is the first four are not that great. The next three rows are like perfect because I got the hang of exactly how much bleach, how much pressure was important. For these top ones, I was able to fix it. What I did is cleaned off the stamp and then only added bleach in the area that I missed. That way when I restamped it, it just kind of fixed it without adding more bleach everywhere else. Now this was a Balenciaga shirt that I loved and I thought maybe I could do this by writing it out. And this is our last DIY of the day. You're gonna take your chalk and you're gonna write your word, whatever your word is. I always start with my first and last letter and then evenly distribute everything else in the middle. What's actually easier is your first letter, your last letter, and your middle letter. I didn't do that, so my E and my R were a little tight. I just erased them with my chalk, rewrote them, and I was good to go. Now, when I first started, I used the paintbrush that I had been using for all of the stencils, but it was too thick. It was harder to control. So I went and grabbed a very skinny one that I had more precision with, and then I just started painting it in. You're just gonna follow your line, painting it in. Now, you can see right there, I accidentally got a droplet of bleach, but it was really lucky because it was perfectly in the center. So I ended up making it a design detail and adding a dot in between each letter, almost like the Friends logo, just like boop, 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 all the way through. So what I'm doing is I'm just painting it on. Now I'm using the mixture of bleach and cornstarch because it creates more of a paste, keeps it thicker, it won't run, it won't bleed, but I needed to make it all match the D, which was the first one I did. So a second layer of bleach will bring out even more color. The more layers you do, the lighter it'll get. So I wanted it to get to this light color so everything was even. Now I was lucky because the shirt I did was a really good dark black. So I grabbed a black paint pen and I was able to basically erase any like feathering out or blending out that I didn't like. So I'm going in there and I'm perfecting my R, making sure that it's crisped up in areas that it felt like too much bleach and it kind of like blended, I didn't like it. So I went in and I'm just cleaning it up. You could do this with like a contrast color and outline it if you want, whatever you want, but I'm gonna show you in a minute what I actually would recommend using for the bleach writing, because it's much crisper. On this shirt, I decided to add the stencils too. And again, my reason for doing this is just a reminder that all of these techniques can be interchanged between home decor, clothing, as long as your garment will react with bleach, you're good to go. Okay, this is the very last thing I'm showing you, and it's really just because of this, the bleach pen. If you can get your hands on a bleach pen, I highly recommend it for the writing stuff. It is really thick and it goes on like a, a thick, thick gel, almost like a puffy paint. And so you end up with super crisp lines. So it might work better for the writing. It was sold out and I couldn't get my hands on it. But basically that's how it works. You just squeeze it and it goes on just like a puff paint. I like putting it in the sun to dry and it sort of like becomes a like a crusty paste and then you can flake it off and wash it. You can write with it, draw with it, anything you want, jackets, clothing, whatever. We're done. All righty, that's it. I'm gonna show you how they all look on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll subscribe if you aren't already or share it with a friend. And make sure you click that notifications bell so you actually find out when I have a new video because um, I do great videos every single Friday. All right, guys, have a beautiful week. I will see you next week. Bye. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun Oh, we
holding on What we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Right. With you and I, the future is bright. 